Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not worthy. We are not faithful in your secret grace. We forget the least of our sins. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin and the divine Open our eyes to see your coming. Open our eyes to see you and your neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. be with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. First reading is Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, and 20 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken the word of the Lord. Okay, we'll sing Psalms 95, 1 through 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. The sea is yours, for you have made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hands. Second reading is from Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, which are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above all every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. But he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him which fills all in all. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. Then he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to these, to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the <clears throat> eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer. Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least one of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated. Grace and peace to you, my friends in Christ, as we gather on this Christ the King Sunday, started almost 100 years ago by the Pope to try to combat the rise of dictators who were trying to rule without justice. And so we celebrate this day, which used to be at the end of October and then became part of the Catholic tradition at the end of, of November, at the last Sunday of the church year in about 1969, when there was reform in the Roman Catholic Church, with Luther, which Lutherans followed. So we gather on this last Sunday of the church year, full of turkey, ready for Christmas, the Advent season. We gather, and we hear this wonderful story about sheep and goats. Woohoo! Am I a sheep or am I a goat? I don't know. We wrestle and we hear this lesson today from Matthew 25. As I gather and think about this passage, I can't help but think of Thanksgiving Day. Grandpa's chair was empty. He wasn't sitting in it. And so, after enough turkey, I went ahead and sat in the chair. And like many of us talking after our one o'clock Thanksgiving meal, uh, I soon departed to a new place. Uh, that triptyline nap time after the meal. We all were visiting, the kids were playing some type of game where you try to gauge who's right and wrong on the, on the answer on a new app of some sort. And, and then eventually one of the little ones woke up from her nap and she brought out two little books. And as I turned to laying back in the chair, I just simply put my arms out and Alden came up to me and let me pick her up. She let me pick her up and I sat in the reclining chair and looked at these two wonderful books, the uh, ABCs of John Deere and um, uh, the colors of the farm. And uh, it was beautiful to have the chance to read to her and, and to discover that she knew her colors and she knew how each of those books ended. She knew the story 
And it was a delight to listen to her invite me into the wonder and the magic of a story. We, she knew how both of those story books ended. We gather this day because we know how the story of Jesus ends. We know of his death and resurrection, of the life and the new kingdom that he is ushering in. And today we hear the ending of Jesus' teachings, according to Matthew. Of all the things he's going to end with, he ends with these three stories of judgment at the end. And today I'd like to talk specifically about the one where Jesus is inviting those who are sheep and goats to welcome the stranger. We remember that Jesus has been inviting people throughout his life. Through his birth and the star in the east, the wise men came. The disciples were invited into this relationship. Men and women, people who were healed, have been invited over and over again. Jesus had been doing the inviting. But now that his death and resurrection is coming, who will do the inviting? Who will do the welcoming? We've heard of these three stories in Matthew, kind of recognition that the bridesmaids had been invited to prepare in Matthew 25. The three people who were given talents, years worth of funds actually, were given the invitation to use their gifts on behalf of God's kingdom. And now there's an invitation to be inviting the goats, the sheep. There's a collective group of people. It's just not one person on each side of Jesus. There's just one sheep, one goat. They represent the nations, the groups of people who indeed perhaps invited while others did not. I was hungry and you gave me. I was thirsty and you gave me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me. I was sick and you gave me antibiotics and inhaler and prednisone, actually. It was, I didn't realize prednisone keeps you awake. Some of you experienced that. I'm up till two in the morning for about five days in a row. Wow. Got a lot of computer pictures done for the family. And I was in prison and you... What's amazing is the sheep didn't even realize they had been doing this for Jesus. They just did it. They knew as a response to the inviter that they should be inviting. A few years back, when I stood in front of the Lutheran School of Theology's graduation ceremony and on behalf of Zion Lutheran Church received the Christ and Community Award, they gave me a few minutes just to speak, and this is the part of the passage I read. I said, the people at Zion, you know, they've been feeding and caring for people but I don't think they realize they've been doing it for Jesus. They have just been doing it. The response to the invitation is to be inviting. Of course, I don't want to be a goat, you know, because the goats resp respond by saying, if we knew it was you, we would have done it. You know, when were you hungry and we didn't do it? When were you sick? When were you thirsty? When were you a stranger? When were you naked? When were you in prison? If we knew it was you, we would have done it. The stranger I'd like to think about today is the story of invitation. What's interesting is I found it quite refreshing to see that the Greek word for I was a stranger and you welcomed me is actually you gathered with me. And the word is sunago, which is the word for synagogue. The gathering. I love to use the word gathering. Just ask people around here. We gather today. We gather. The reality is we gather. All kinds of places do we gather. And here it is. I was a stranger, a xenophobe, and you welcomed me. You gathered with me in a place, a holy place, rooted in the water and the promises of God. We gather indeed this day into this place as a collective community with all the Christian community around the world this weekend. 
We gather because of the one who's been doing the inviting. We gather as both sheep and goat because the reality is there are many times we don't invite, we don't welcome, we don't realize that we are not only entertaining angels unaware, but we are indeed welcoming and gathering with Jesus. God's invitation leads us to be inviting, leads us into relationships where, like on September, what was that date? September 13th, 2018, I sent an instant message to some guy who was responsible for the Illinois Cars and Cruises show. You know that guy, don't you, Cameron? I simply sent an invitation. Cameron's our media guy today. Uh, everybody say hi, Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. <coughs> I simply sent an invitation to somebody who was responsible for the Illinois Cars and Cruises show and said, hey, I'm a part of Katie's Cup. Would you consider helping us start a car show? Five years later, it's become the biggest car show in Rockford on a consistent basis. And what a blessing that invitation has been. For I have been richly blessed by you, Cameron, and your mom and dad, Kurt and Beth, for the invitation to be inviting. It's provided an opportunity for the community to gather in our neighborhood, to work, play, learn, serve, worship, and gather again and again. Because the invitation through the waters of baptism come to all of us. For we have been invited again and again, claimed by God, gathered into Christ, invited again into this communion where God's mercy reigns forever. The great sheep who gathers all the sheep and goats into this blessed place, into this blessed holy space, into this communion of saints who've gone on before us into this gathering. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are comfortable and able as we recite the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creative God, we pray for the beauty of the natural world. Lead humankind to care for and nurture your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to this earth so that generations to come may enjoy the beauty of all you have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of guidance, we pray for the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority and power. May they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need and striving toward a goal of peace and prosperity for all. Guide us and all your people to do justice and walk humbly with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and mercy, we pray for our siblings around the world. We pray for our siblings in Palestine and Israel, in Congo and Ukraine. Grant them the strength they need at this time. Heal the mind, the body, and the spirit of those who are grieving. Guide the leaders of this world to work toward peace and justice. And may your church, may we be a beacon of your light and love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for people who have been marginalized. People who have been marginalized by society and politics and religion. May they soon experience equity, healing, and hope. Bring an end to gun violence, houselessness, addiction, and all of the things that attempt to keep us apart from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort and healing, we pray for all experiencing illness and grief. May your children be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of Jesus who walks beside them. We pray especially for John Malberg and for all of those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Grant us comfort, O God, and grant us peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray in thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy. We pray that their faithful witness guides your church until the day that we join them in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for this church and we pray for this congregation. May we find deeper faith and a stronger commitment to all of us here and far through you. We pray for the ministries of this church and we give thanks for the pastors and the leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. 
Please share the sign of the peace with those around you.
Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. In the night when she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this with your hands for me. The body of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Sing our Sunday song. 